Lost Raihu by Imploding Colon, read by Deathlight. Chapter 10, Stalactite. Someone flinched, and it wasn't Rainbow Dash. As soon as the first of many eels twitched, Rainbow Dash angled her wings towards the lake. As a result, her body lifted up at the last millisecond, letting her hooves in the center of the giant serpent's forehead. The impact sent the monster's skull colliding with the others. The eels collapsed like a wet sack of meat. A huge explosion of lake water shot up, but Rainbow was already majestically climbing above it. She shot straight towards the ceiling, and to her luck, she saw a bright circle of light. There was a vertical tunnel directly above her, daring charge, and it was bordered by several thin, slag-type formations, surging straight towards the hole. She twirled, so one of her hooves came in contact with one of the limestone spikes. She snapped it effortlessly off the ceiling, and carried it with her into the thinner corridor. The echoes doubled, tripled. She knew, without looking, that there were two three eels darting up the tunnel to chase after her. She also realized that they would catch up with her in mere seconds, seeing as they were the ones who carved these corridors out to begin with. Rimadash maintained her speed, darting up the tunnel, flying towards the light, piercing the storm's rainwater pelting her from thousands of feet above. She felt the air turning rancid heating up from the pursuing eels at her tail. She had waited long enough. Finally, she pivoted the broken stalagmite in her grasp, so that she was scraping it along the opposite sides of the tunnel, showering sparks and pebbles. She spun in her ascent, curving the tunnel wider, like a buzzsaw climbing its way to the surface. The tunnel shook and crumbled, as soon it couldn't handle the pressure. Rivulets of cracking rock outraced Rainbow. Everything threatened to collapse around her. It was at this moment that the first of several hissing eels caught up with her. Its jaws lunged for her prismatic tail hairs. With a spiral, Rainbow Dash flung what was left of the stubby stalagmite down, so that the creature unwarily swallowed it. She then kicked her hooves off the gasping jaws of the thing and propelled herself forward. The beast was well-timed, for a claustrophobic avalanche of crumbling rock was filling the tunnel. Soon, all the eels beneath her shrieked as the lower end of the tunnel collapsed, carrying the meaty wake back down towards the distant nesting cave below, just as the combined cacophony of their collapsing bodies filled the chamber. We were about to reach the light. She bursted out into a blinding bright world, beset with rainwater, thunder, and wind. Her body spun awkwardly into the chaos, dodging gale force wind and sheets of needle sharp precipitation. Ultimately, she dove towards the earth, ricocheted off a hilltop, and came to a grinding stop in a soaked bed of soil and grass. Rimurash slumped to a stop there, panting. She was covered in water, slime, mud, and sweat. She was filthy and soaked to the bone, but she was also laughing. Rainbow's guffawing voice broke through the storm, challenging the lightning. She rolled over and clutched her mud-soaked chest. As she cackled and gasped, her mouth caught gallons of rain hammering down at her, but it made no difference. She was alive. Her goggled eyes opened, taking in the clouds above. She smelled at the random flashes of lightning and bursts of sunlight, until her vision was overcame by just how gray everything was. Slowly, like a deflating balloon, her laughter stopped, and her smile melted away. Eventually, she gulped and just lied there, becoming one with the moisture. She was alive, but she was still alone. Minutes passed, even an hour, during which Rima spent the entire of the storm sitting on her haunches and staring into the rain-soaked landscape. Her back was to the east. She knew it would only be a matter of time before she turned around completely and resumed her trek. For a moment, she simply enjoyed the natural shower 
She could have caught a cold. She could have even risked pneumonia. But she wasn't afraid. There is more than one way to cheat death. And if Rainbow Dash was anything, she was an explorer. Hello everyone, I will always remind you, I do have Patreon, as well as a one-time donation open. Anyways, let's get to the story here. I'm sorry there's not a bunch of screaming effects, there's not a bunch of, um... Car, um... Not, just, not as much effects as I, what I'd normally like to put in these things. Um, but I think October is gonna make it up, most definitely. But part of my struggle is, is I can't really be too loud in this, in this room. Because, well, I'm living with six other people and we all live pretty damn close to each other. As well as there's people above me, below me as well, so... I cannot do gut-wrenching screams anymore and it makes me sad. <laughs> but anyways, on further news, I guess, um... I think that's a good way to honestly, I believe there's one more week. No, this is the last week. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, I think that's a good way to stop it for a month and then pick it back up back up in November. Because it doesn't leave you with any cliffhanger at all, really. It just leaves her just chilling out in the rain. It's not too bad at all, I think, for cliffhangers. Um, could have been worse. I could have just ditched this week entirely. And, um, you guys could have been just sitting there, um, waiting for it to get out of the tunnels, but that would have been just annoying, and I know how that is. On further news, though, I have a mini fridge in my room. I wouldn't even consider it really a mini fridge. It's like a half-sized, um, regular, like, you know those regular-sized, um, refrigerators with the freezers on top? It's pretty much one of those, but half its size. I got that thing sitting in my room now. I bought that thing for only $150, which isn't too bad. I mean, it's just weird because there's a Lowe's just right next to Walmart. I got into Lowe's first and looking at stuff and for my tools and stuff for my auto body. And, I'm, and I happen to run across like the same exact brand, same exact size. Everything was exactly the same. And I want $300 for the thing. I go trotting over to Walmart. They wanted that thing for half that, so. And the reason why I bought it? Well, I am sick of the people that I'm living with because I am. I don't know, it feels like I'm feeding five people sometimes. And I'm just sick of people just taking my food all the time, so I bought that thing and put all the food that I have bought so far into it, so now that should have no issue. And uh, also, I've said this a couple of times, I'm going to ISU and um, apparently the Brony Club there, they have not been active for for like a year and a half, so I don't know if there's any Bronies down there, that'd be kind of cool to let me know. Just, I don't know, hang out. I don't know. Probably not now, considering how busy I am, but something. Anyways, I guess with that, I will leave you, and um, we'll see you next time, I guess.